August has arrived in Cookville, Tennessee, and has brought along with it an unusual calmness. In contrast to the mayhem that came before, the quiet is overwhelming. Of the untold number of repetitions from the legion of torturous training sessions, only echoes now bounce unhindered through the awesome stillness inside of CrossFit Mayhem. And as the last of the blood, sweat, and tears are wiped clean from the floors, their previous owners have dispersed. They now descend on Madison, Wisconsin in the 2022 CrossFit Games to test their preparation in battle. The World Wide Open is the largest international sporting event in history. From nearly 300,000 athletes who began the journey last February, 40 men, 40 women, and 30 teams have earned the right to compete at the CrossFit Games. A small army of them claim Mayhem as their home. It's a staggering representation, and as Mayhem's director of training, Jake Lockhart, notes, an enormous point of pride. It's not like a metric people are tracking year to year. I try to relate it to people. Like at the NFL Combine draft, people are tracking like how many did Alabama send to the NFL, how many did Georgia send, like who won that each year, and you know how many first round draft picks and all that. We don't have that in our sport yet just because it's younger, and there hasn't been training camps, quote unquote, as much in the past. There's been maybe like one or two, and now there's a five to ten, like big names. And it's pretty wild because 17 is like unprecedented. It's close to fourth of the field on the individual side, and the next closest training camp to us was I think around five or six, or like over triple the next one, which is a huge deal. Put another way, if we're keeping score, we are winning. One, two, three, On the eve of competition, athletes check in. On the surface, it's pageantry, fanfare, and celebration. A bustling atmosphere filled with excitement and anticipation. For the top athletes in the world, it's also a reminder of the high stakes of the CrossFit Games and the intense, still unknown challenges that lay ahead. That was awesome. That was a take in the moment. I was really excited to be back and having that experience. I was just excited to see what I could do and I knew that I had put so much work into training and I sacrificed a lot, so I was just really excited to get out there and do my best. <laughs> we look like we got in at 3 a.m. Three whole years. Does it feel surreal? Sort of, but it also feels like I was here yesterday, really? but like as a baby, just like checking in to like the teenage age groups. The last time I was at the games was 2019 as a teenager. It was definitely a really cool experience to finally make it as an individual. I mean, I've really been dreaming about it since you know, my first games in 2018 when I was 15 years old. I haven't seen the rest of it yet, but so far I'm, I'm liking it. <laughs> Lazar Jukic. Lazar is yeah, better. Well, what's perfect? Lazar is perfect. Lazar. Lazar is perfect. This was my second year preparing for the games. It was completely different than what I experienced in the first year of preparation for the games. Yes. Last year I, I felt like my shorts is up to here. No way. Now it's better, so yeah. Awesome. I yeah. like it. Glad to hear it. That might be the fastest I've ever seen of all the athletes. I, I, I do it like, as a superman. <laughs> there was four weeks before the games in Cookville. I came there to have three full weeks of preparation with the crew. It was unbelievable. It was everything I imagined. Don't do serious, you're trying to tell me serious and laugh. Am I looking I'm okay. I never know what to do. I'm like <laughs> yeah, does that count? Seth Stovall. Ben Davidson. Yeah, you guys you gotta stop filming so much, you gotta edit that later. What if I take some sheet metal home with me? When it comes to the Mayhem Empire, the word team has become synonymous with champion at the CrossFit Games. But for the substantial roster of rookies on the youngest team in the games field, Mayhem Justice, it represents something different. It's the chance of a lifetime. I mean, yeah, going to the games, there wasn't much expectation, but that doesn't mean we didn't want to do well. In my mind, I wanted to be top 10, just because in quarterfinals, we were a top 10 team. One year ago, yeah, I may have been in like Bennett's parking lot <laughs> right now in my van. <laughs> I got out of Walmart. 
So I'm probably in Bennett's parking lot right now. The CrossFit Games, like to think about it and like what it is. Like there's like this thing to it, like it just seems like it's untouchable. So many people come in here, like there's good athletes that come here and even they don't make it. I'm ready. The third Mayhem team, Independence, were already fixated on the podium. The expectation was, you know, do as best we can. Like, I don't think any of us really try to set huge expectations, goals. However, we set the goal to be on the podium. That was for sure the goal. Personally, I wasn't going to settle for third place, although I still would be happy and satisfied. But I wanted to be standing right next to Rich, and I wanted a silver medal. Okay. This guy's crazy. Ah. Just like that, we're done. What's up? I didn't didn't came didn't come dressed up like the couple, sir. Sorry about that. Approaching his third appearance at the games, Brazilian superstar Gui Malheiros is fighting an internal battle. Guilherme Malheiros. Lighthearted and playful by nature, the 23-year-old is pensive at check-in, perhaps feeling the pressure to back up his seventh place finish from last year. Despite the nerves, he's determined to channel this energy into a positive action. The expectations that I had this year were a lot different from last year. And I think that this internal pressure inside of me changed a little bit my mind and my behavior during the games. So I wasn't having fun as I used to have, so I was more serious. <laughs> so how's it going? Yeah. Hey, can you check like, the difference? <laughs> she's wearing everything? <laughs> like, she's the boss. No way! <laughs> Treating him as the prince that he is. <laughs> One more sleep remains before the athletes take the biggest stage in the world. It's the last opportunity they will have to reflect on the journey that brought them here and to mentally prepare themselves for the battle that lies ahead. Day one of competition is celebrated as a homecoming, bringing the fittest fans on earth to Madison from all corners of the globe. And with them come expectations, excitement, and anticipation. For the first time in CrossFit Games history, athletes will be competing through the middle of the campground on this gravel road. They'll be biking beside me, and with the athletes jockeying for a position, the slick conditions, plus hundreds of screaming fans, it could be an explosive start to event number one, and I, for one, cannot wait. The 2022 Noble CrossFit Games are underway. The athletes sprinting to the rig where they will complete 75 toes of water. After this, they will exit the stadium and they will ride five loops of a one mile course, five miles total. Then when they get back in, choose any bar that you want. All of us were talking like we came to this collective agreement that after the 75 chest of ours, turning around to go grab our bike, we're all like, what just hit us? Once you get to the bike, there is not a lot of room for passing and moving. It may be two to three athletes wide. If the guys were ahead of me, like, I can't catch them. Like, there's no way that I can catch them because the same pace that the first bag was holding, they would have for, like, the entire workout. So if they got first for me after the, the toes bar, they're in front and that's it. I knew that was going to be kind of a struggle for me, but I was really happy with my effort. Like I was pushing the bike as, as best as I could and I was able to pass some people. I realized afterwards, I was like, I haven't ridden a bike in four years. And so I had low expectations. I just felt really, really elated. I think it's just that feeling of like, I actually did my best. And now Cara Saunders. <laughs> <laughs> All smiles as she picks up her water bottle, waves at the crowd, and will get across the finish line. Yeah, man, I 
Rebecca is making her way mentally to the finish line. The talk I've been like, what I've been saying to myself is like, this is fun. We you work really hard. Minutes, Don't take it too seriously. Run your own race. Don't forget to smile and look around, listen to the cheers, because it's just so nice. Not everyone gets that. So I'm being a little bit more deliberate about paying attention, and it makes it a lot more enjoyable. A top 10 finish is a fitting start for what will be Cara Saunders' 10th CrossFit Games. As the Australian was off to a smooth start, Serbia's Lazar Jukic would encounter a rockier kickoff. The strategy was just like, try to go to the bike as fast as you can from the start. I went like fifth or sixth at the bike and just started hammering to, to get into that leading pack. Somehow I ended up next to Spencer. He caught up to me after those chest bars. And we went first into the stadium and I was really confused. We went through the gate and the judge didn't say anything. No, that's not right. That's not this right. This has got to be a mistake yeah. for Spencer Panjic. He's running that's across the right. finish line. Jukic is going to turn around. There is some confusion no. here. Jukic and Panjic were definitely behind Yonikoski. This is most likely not correct. They are missing a lap. They're going to have maybe two. Maybe two laps. I don't know, man. I don't know. Lazar finishes 10th with the penalties applied, but he starts a long week on his heels. You gotta put your head down, move on to the next event. Don't worry about it anymore, it's done. You can't let that take up mental headspace because if you let that, then it's, gonna, it's going to affect your next performance sometime. The games is very high stress, it's fun, but it is. Each event's so stressful because there's always 100 points on the line for the most part, and that's a lot of points to have and a lot of points to give up. So if you're thinking about what about these five to 10 points in the last event, you're gonna miss something on the next one, maybe not execute as well. So we just gotta, hey, it's gone, it's over, let's go. You can survive one mistake at the CrossFit Games but burning it this early in competition is like playing with fire. Jukic and Koski are through. The road is across in third, and now Lazar Jukic will beat Roman Krennikov in. Despite his mistake in bike to work, Lazar ends the day with two top 10 finishes and the sixth place overall. He enjoys a renewed confidence and a sense of relief. In CrossFit, they say the art is in the programming. Well, in 2022, for the first time since their inception, the games have a new artist. And athletes are struggling to adapt as competition director Adrian Bosman's vision takes shape in a very different kind of test. We fail at the margins of our experience, but by intentionally pushing those margins, we can find the fittest on earth. By that point, I kind of started to see how the games was playing out and how Boz was sort of like directing it. You kind of have one of two options. You can be freaked out or you can kind of just roll with it. Like stressing and freaking out doesn't make you more likely to get it. I guess my approach was just full sun. I wasn't sure how it was going to stack up compared to the field still. I was so pumped that there was something called a skill medley because I love skills. That one you just had to be aggressive, but you couldn't make a mistake, right? If you like fell off the pegboard, if you break on your single unders for the 75, like you're done. Unbroken, but if you miss, you go back to zero. Now they have to do 10 single leg squats. If that other foot comes down at any time, they start back at zero. Of 
Paige Powers is back on her feet along with Victoria Campos as they both come across the finish line. You know, the first round went surprisingly good, and I was grateful that I got a chance for the second round. However, that one I struggled with. Honestly, I was shocked that I didn't move on into the next round. But again, another test is accuracy. For Guy Malheros, it was time to face any demons he had been battling in training. Luckily for Guy, his athleticism is world class. And when it comes to adapting to new challenges, he stands out from the crowd. Guy props him, I mean, he was just, he's an athlete, and then he's super tight to high switch, so he can move fast. Even the warm-up, I didn't do any of, like, the cross the one thing. I was just praying that I could qualify to the final, and in the finals, I will learn how to do it. One strict peg in the set. Let's keep my yellow sister. I loved it. It was the, actually it was the most fun event of the games for me. The attention then turned to the teams, where Mayhem Independence would take the competition floor for the first time together. Taking the floor for the first time was a really good feeling. I knew I was ready. I mean, I think we executed the bike race better than we thought we could. Biker Bob, I was, <laughs> that was one of the coolest experiences ever. We knew that there were gonna be some people who were stronger on the bike or maybe even pushing the bobsled. We're not the biggest team, but we hung in there. We took third place in that, so we were really happy with that. It was a good way to kick it off. Navy Blue, 24-34, Freedom in three seconds after that. Independence, two seconds after that. Freedom came in second, we came in third. That was a really good feeling, and I knew we belonged there after that event. For the newcomers from Mayhem, event one presented an uncomfortable wake-up call. That expectations from training don't always match up with the reality of competition. So like going into the first workout, like we saw it on paper, and I literally told the team, I was like, hey, this is a workout that like, we need to win this heat. Because we've done those movements a million times in training. I mean, a million times. It's all stuff that we're all phenomenal at. There were six events at Santa Kit, and three of them had the worm. The worm was a huge kind of setback for us, and that put us in a lot of holes. That was straight up what we were practicing. I mean, almost every day we were hitting that thing, and we got a lot better at it. The mistake came not training mixed gender pairs on the the big bob, you know, here at Mayhem we got the advantage of having the bob, but we we never did that combo. We were frustrated for sure. I mean, it's like you, if you're working on a weakness for so freaking long, and then you show up to competition day expecting to like show what you've you know progressed in, and then you can't. We had our hands on the little block, and like we're waiting for the three, two, one. And I remember they they had the camera like right on us, and I was like, as they should, because we're gonna win this heat. You know, and then like in my mind I look like a total jackass when like we go out there and like we're we're pushing the sled a minute behind, you know, the people fish for us and we're dead last. A minute and fifteen seconds ahead of the cap. Mayhem justice is done. I mean it hit like a ton of bricks. I told him like the cliche, like, hey, it's it's just one event. Like, you know, we're gonna have a lot of events. It sucks. We're starting out with basically no points, but like we have the opportunity to only do better from here like we literally cannot do any worse so in that way it was comforting but win lose or draw the show must go on 
The action continued that evening in the Coliseum. Nothing is guaranteed at the CrossFit Games, including, as luck would have it, the schedule. When inclement weather forced a shift in the schedule, athletes were tested mentally. When their planned rest day was taken away. The leaderboard did a bit of moving around on that first day, and I've always been in the mindset that you sort of don't ever have a placing to, to lose, or like nothing's set in until all the tests have been made, but it was a good start. Yeah, I feel pretty good today. A couple of things like a little bit sore as expected, but nothing that shouldn't be. Um, I fueled right, I rested as best I could, so. Just gonna have fun? Yeah, gonna have fun. That's the plan. Uh, good. Uh, 200 points for uh, one event. It's okay. Uh, I'm gonna push the run and then try to handle the jerks as good as I can. You? Good. Feeling good today? Yeah. Good job. How are you feeling? Thanks. <laughs> it would have been way better to have it as our second workout because my legs were so fatigued from. I guess the squat cleans. Fine. Our yesterday was pretty easy. How yeah. about you? It's like sore from the dips and oh, all of my hamstrings. I figured that you guys were just on the dips. Yeah. Now we have the second event that was supposed to be, you know, yeah. the second event. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting with uh, like feeling a little more <laughs> like you, sore and trash. <laughs> yeah. Better for us too. Yeah. How are you today? Sore. Sore? <laughs> One more workout. Short Time to go. Short. How are you feeling about yesterday? Uh, not very good. It wasn't a good day. My first good day. Oh my gosh! Hey, it wasn't. A I found him. It's him. Hello, hello. Ça va bien? French speaking. Yeah. Uh, not a good day. Not our first good day yesterday. But it is what it is. It's a game. So <laughs> just focus on the next one and that's it. Despite two podium finishes as a teenager, Paige Powers knew that competing toe to toe with her heroes at the CrossFit Games would be different. After a day in the mix, she's learning just how big that difference can be. Aside from some early mental errors, however, the pieces are falling in place for Powers. She's adjusting and finding her footing. Probably after day one, I felt like I was kind of like in the groove, whereas the beginning of day one, I was like, holy cow, I, I still can't believe that I'm here, I'm like competing here. How are you feeling? Um, a tiny bit sore in like my arm region, but other than that, I feel good. Yesterday, I kind of like, I didn't really, not that I didn't know what I was doing, but it just like felt so out of place. Like, I think I didn't really, you know, put it together that like I'm like here, like at the games competing. There was so much build up to it, but I think it took me like a day or two to kind of get in my groove a little bit. However, experience is the best teacher. And at these games, Powers is drinking from the fire hose, filing away her experience for future success. First window is underway. Two minutes for a 400 meter run. And then Max jerks off the blocks. It was really hard. I guess I didn't really trust myself enough to pick up the bar and just like go for it. And I kind of took a little bit too much time where I could have sneaked in like three plus reps between the three windows. So, you know, that's just stuff that you can take away and learn from. That one was just about, hey, this is a longer event than you think because the distances added up. It was very, very, as we say, aerobic because you had to run fast. Whenever I was running on the shuttle run, my legs weren't working. I felt like I had concrete in my quads and my hamstrings were just blown up the whole time. 
I really needed that event to be on the Wednesday for me. I didn't cope in the heat. I ended up having to go into like survival mode and be like, just don't waste this entirely. Like I, I, I remember going to the 600 meter run going like, I don't even know if I can finish the 600 meter run the way I'm feeling right now. And I was like, well, don't start running and then get nothing, you know? So you have to just like, I had to just breathe and try and stride it out and not worry about anything else and just keep coming back to my breath to stay as calm as possible and just try and get something. Honestly, warming up, I felt like Superman. Like, I think I hit like 340 in the warm ups and it felt like 275. And I was just like, all right, I'm going big. Parker's fired up for Mayhem Independence. Squats felt heavy that day, didn't feel that great. I missed my second attempt, which unfortunately, you know, heavy squats is not something I'm good at anyways. I knew we would do well in the weightlifting event, and that was our best finish for the weekend. Seth admittedly was nervous because he was in runners. I, in the briefing before, they were saying that, you know, going from the, the strength event and the, the next event, which was a three mile run, you couldn't change shoes because they were going to be back to back. I, I remember someone told me wrist squatted last year in runners, so I was like, ah, I may as well try it. He was like, dude, I don't know what I should go for. Like, I don't know if I can get 365. And I was like, dude, like, I, I know how strong you are, and like, we're relatively fresh right now. I was like, like, you'll be all right. Like, you'll be just fine. Like, I know you can get at least 375. So I go out there, and I don't know what his first weight was. I want to say it was around that. But then he was like, should I go 390? And I was like, nah, bro. Like, like you don't go 390. You go 400. And so he's like, all right, I guess. Put on 400, and he hit it easily. And then turned around and was just a stud on the run, too. I mean, he was dragging me. After going into the max lift and going into that run, seeing Angelo pretty salty and pissed that he didn't hit his final lift, he gave me the energy and the motivation that I needed because it looked like he was, he was going out for blood. Yeah, I got pretty mad. I missed that second lift. I was pretty mad. But going into the run, we knew Luke and I could do very well. Me being as pissed off as I was, I knew I was ready to run until I blacked out. For Brazil's Gui Malheiro, some of the mental demons that plagued him before the competition are now invading his reality on the competition floor. In an event that lined up perfectly on paper, he suffered a major setback and began to dig himself an early hole. I was very tired from the first workout, from the first day. I knew that the, the, the jerk would be a differential for me, but the run blew me up in the second half, like the 400 was already kind of like hard, and then the 600 just punched me in the face again. Guy didn't do as well, unfortunately, because he would have won the overhead event, but he didn't have enough time. We just learned a ton, like with Guy, and that's what we tried to look at it as. God made him a certain way, like Guy is just strong. Guy's always gonna do really well in two or three events, like sprinting type. We know Guy's aerobic game's gotta get better, because the games is just more aerobic than any other event of the year. As Guy has time on his feet, just time working through machines, like building that aerobic base, as we say, it's gonna pay off in years to come. Mentally, I was already like, not done, but I was pissed. I was just pissed, just angry about everything and how things was going. My mind going to Friday was, let's just do it, you know? Like, let's just hang on. He struggled with his early setback, Lazar Jukic had shaken off his snafu from event one and took a measured approach to shuttle to overhead. I knew I will not be the first one on, on the run and I knew I'm not going to be best lifter. So I just tried to get 
two good scores. It was good finish today for me since I was really high on the leaderboard. Every year at the CrossFit Games, one event stands out amongst the rest. The Crucible of the Weekend. In the history of the CrossFit Games, the capital event jumps off the page, both for its difficulty and its creativity. Putting all facets of fitness on display and navigating a broad swath of Madison, the capital event possessed the ability to make or break the weekend for competitors. You can already feel the anticipation in the air here at the finish line that the athletes will have to pick up their Husafels at the base of the staircase. They'll have to bear hug carry it up these 49 steps behind me, counted them myself this morning, and then they'll cross the finish line right here in the heart of the capital of Madison. Before we get there, we had the pig flips, the same implement that was used at the games last year, 510 pounds for the men, 350 pounds for the women. Once they complete the pig flips, they'll do another one mile loop of the bike course from Wednesday. You start out with the pick flips, so like stronger, powerful athletes are gonna do well there. Like they're gonna flip it really aggressively. The more aerobic, like endurance type athletes, gonna take them longer. For me, it was if I finish the pick, event is over. In my head, I was like, okay, as long as I can hold my own on the pick flips, I can either catch people on the run, or that can be like where I gain some more momentum in the workout. I just figured it'd be a grinder. I didn't realize how hard it was actually going to be until I was like a mile and a half in the run. I was like, oh man, it's, it's hitting now. Mentally, for me, that workout was hard. I really needed to dig deep because I was so uncomfortable from the start. There was a lot of self-talk back and forth and again, having to constantly just be like, one foot in front of the other, keep breathing, like as best I could, just try and keep moving and get through it. I dropped the cherry bags, that was a straight line, and I thought the rust fell bags were like just in the finish of this straight line, but no, they weren't. The rust fell was like very, very far. And I remember looking at them, I was like, oh shit. So at the end, like that bag was just heavy enough, and we're not used to vertical displacement. Like usually we go horizontal, like we just run further and carry it like this way, but they went up steps, which is a game changer. The stairs are looming, getting close to the 30 minute mark now. <laughs> Grab the bag, and was the heaviest bag that I ever carried. I like I just got punched in the face. I just couldn't hold it, my back broke, my lungs were hurting, like everything was hurting. I couldn't pick it up if my life was depending on it. Jukic is now just trying to inch that bag up the steps and it's just the complete arm fatigue in that carry. That's a Jukic. Jukic is just collapsing on this as Corbin Carl leads and comes across. thing was just a battle against myself like am I how am I gonna get to the top of these stairs and regardless of the placement or where I was at I was just so happy that I was able to finish it I just felt really proud of myself for not giving up and for making it to the top so in the finish my legs were kind of burning to the end of the, to the finish line and it was very painful and the medical medical people were there asking me if I was right. And I was like, someone pick me up, someone pick me up, and no one did. 
and I was very, very hurt in that time. So that was the, the worst event of my life, the worst workout of my life. dropping the bag and like I was just so like physically exhausted. All the way, all the way, all the way. I see Paige come and cross the finish line and I'm I'm going over there and I see Gee grab her so I'm like following her trying to think of what she might need. I remember like seeing Guy and Bailey and they like came over to me and like Guy walked me over the wall and you know I was super tired and he dumped like water on me to cool me down and you know Bailey was there she had some rags for me. I was like pretty disappointed and not so much my effort because I literally did all that I could but I was pretty disappointed that, you know, I probably should have been running more this year and, you know, it wasn't a great finish and I was struggling a lot and so it kind of just like, all the emotions just like flooded. It's just a reminder that we're not just here by ourselves, you know, like we are a team and we've trained and suffered together so much that we care for each other. It was really like cool to see that in my moment of weakness, like my best friends were right there helping me along. A supporting cast member to the test itself is how well athletes can recover between events. Headed back to the North Park from the Capitol, facing a redesigned competition floor, the resilience of the world's fittest athletes and their breaking points would now be on display. You have to start fueling immediately because like you're empty, right? Your tank's empty, you gotta fill it up right then. You're not hungry, you have like heat exhaustion, so you're not, no appetite, but you have to make yourself eat, which is huge through the whole weekend. You have to fuel, if you run out of gas, it doesn't matter if this is your best event, you will do terrible. That was a big energy requirement, like mentally and physically. We didn't really get much of a cool down. We kind of like poured water over ourselves, got put on buses, straight back. As CrossFit Games fans, it's the very human aspects of the superhumans we see perform that draw us closer into their orbit. You'll find no better example than Bailey Rail, who assesses her performance by a measuring stick that transcends the leaderboard. I didn't feel like I was coming off of a low. I was just really happy that I stepped up to something that was kind of scary and that gave me some momentum of like, okay, you can do this. And again, a reminder, like this is you versus you. Event six is underway and we start with the 12 muscle ups. Here goes Bailey Rail onto the 125 pound axle bar. 
Bailey Rail has not put the barbell down. So I was like, you're going unbroken because if you set this bar down, there's no telling when you're going to pick it up. And Bailey Rail is going to take heat number one. so glad that I've been doing mayhem because if I hadn't have done that many workouts like that, I don't know where I would have placed feeling the way I was feeling. Now all I need is to pull a pee up so I get the hunt. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got it. Oh, In the team competition, mayhem independence had hit their groove. And when the opportunity for greatness presented itself, they stepped on the gas. I felt like I had my worst event behind me, being the heavy lift, and I feel like the girls had their worst, some of their worst events behind them, being the hard, you know, the long run or the fast run, maybe. I thought we had some good stuff ahead of us, like just true CrossFit, you know, you get in the weekend and they're really gonna throw CrossFit workouts at you, and we're like, you know, Freedom's not beating us by that much in training, and we know how it was last year, team, they're beating teams by a minute or two. Like, if we can stay close to them, like we were in training, then we're gonna be golden. Big workout I think is pretty unforgettable being second to freedom. They smashed it and then we came in. We had many highlight moments, but it was the only event where we beat everybody in the field except for freedom. And it's independence that races across in second. All mayhem all day. That was such a beautiful moment because I felt like we were right there in the dogfight the whole time. Coming one, two to them was pretty unforgettable, pretty awesome, having them wait for us at the finish line and us be second in. That was really cool. That was probably the best event of the whole weekend. Mayhem Justice, on the other hand, was having a different experience at the games, facing the harsh reality that they would likely be cut from the competition. No one from Mayhem competes for fun, and Justice would fight until the final buzzer. But in light of their circumstance, team captain Ben Davidson encouraged his young team to refocus on making the most of the experience, his eyes already on the future. So on the pig flip workout, you know, there was kind of a moment where me and Seth were just waiting there and I kind of realized that we weren't going to finish very well in that event. It was probably going to be closer to, you know, back of the pack again. Taking another last place finish, I kind of knew like we wouldn't make the top cut, but that was when I kind of realized we wouldn't be making it to Sunday. I just had a feeling we were going to get cut. Ben did too. Uh, we, tr we tried to keep it in our minds that, you know, there's still one more day left. So we get down flipping the sled and then, you know, we both kind of got our foot propped up on the pig. We weren't doing great. And so every day I'd kind of tell the team, I was like, hey guys, like, you know, it doesn't matter what the leaderboard says, like, we're here, we're, we're doing the thing, like, we've made it. I just told Seth, like, hey, like, whenever you're here, like, as an individual, I don't want you thinking, like, this whole mentality of like, oh, it's just good that we made it. It's just good that we're here. You know, we made it to CrossFit Games. Like I told him, I was like, I don't want you ever getting that in your head. He was saying, you know, kind of enjoy this moment right here because, you know, we're doing it with friends and, you know, try to have fun while you can. But next year when you go individual, you go into it as a competitor. You don't go into it to have fun like we're doing right now. I'm like, I don't want you ever thinking like, oh, I took a last place in event, like it's okay. You know, I want you thinking, like, I'm gonna take this workout, do my best, like, I'm gonna try to win every single event. That was that was a cool moment for me and Ben. We can have fun on this team, but individual next year, it's time to step up. I originally wanted to go individual, and Rich told me before, it's, it's a good idea to go team, just to get experience. I was second guessing it for a while, but, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that I went. I think I was frustrated because the thing with team is you can't show your full like potential when you're on team. I think that was probably the most frustrating part for me over the weekend, but I was kind of just thinking in my head, I was like, you know, thinking about next year, and I was like, well, now it's time for me to play.
Seth Stovall's on the right side pushing. Famous because he moved to Cookville, Tennessee from California and literally lived in his van for quite some time. Like so many people do, he just he kind of comes here and he's like, you know, I want to make the CrossFit Games. You know, he's 18 years old, he's living out of his van, he doesn't have a job. You know, how many times have you seen that? You know, you see it time and time again. He's one of the first guys that's come here that I've been like, oh, okay, yeah, like, I think he will make the CrossFit Games. I don't know when, but yeah, I'm excited to see like what he's gonna do because I mean he's gonna be somebody to look out for. Unknown and unknowable is a character of the CrossFit Games test, and athletes need to be prepared for anything and everything. Back at the Coliseum, a new movement standard for handstand push-ups, born from the mind of Boz, would once again drive this concept home. This is the latest iteration of the handstand push-up to appear in CrossFit Games programming, and according to Adrian Bosman, this is the pinnacle of the movement, because it basically forces the athletes into an upside-down reverse strict press position, and the athletes are unable to rest their head on the ground at the bottom of each rep. All of the athletes in the field would face relative struggles. But for Paige Powers, it was an opportunity to flex a unique skill set all her own. I just knew going into it to play it smart, you know, push that brink of going super hard, but obviously not to failure. And in lane number one, it's Paige Powers! Paige Powers has a three-rep lead for Paige Powers, making moves to take over first place. It was really cool, especially because like my previous finishes were always like middle of the pack. And that one, it was really cool to, you know, go toe to toe with the top girl in my heat, which was Danny. I kind of knew that it was going to be left into the judges' hands. And so I tried not to focus on really what anybody else was doing. I was just focused on trying to meet the standard as best as I could. And if I got no rep, then don't freak out about it. Just continue to communicate with your judge and try to hit the standard as best as I could. I get to the end and I'm like at that time frame, I'm like, oh no, I hear the time and I get on this bike and I'm like, I have to go full send right now. Everyone stood up and they're just like cheering and screaming for me to like finish this bike. And I was just in another place and I'm like, I was going so fast and I felt nothing. Like I couldn't feel the pain at all. But I remember just being like, I, I have to get these calories. Like there's no way I am not finishing this workout right now. I, um, yeah, I was just saying, handstand push-ups are like top three weakest things for me, excluding the sun, because I don't do well in the heat. <laughs> I like running, handstand push-ups and deadlifts. And I've been working on them obviously a lot and yeah, a, a lot, you know, over the years. Like I think take, getting one handstand push-up took me 12 months. Like some people kind of come and it took me 12 months to get one when I first started CrossFit. I worked my ass off. I used to like do handstand push-ups, like, handstand hold, handstand push-ups under my mum's deck, like every day just trying to get one. And um, so I had no expectations and then I did some in the warm-up area and because Pamela had programmed them into like accessories last week and I was like, thank God, because I like watched that video and I had like a bit of awareness, but I was like, finishing it would be awesome, but I just wanted to like keep moving and do my thing and then, but I was like, oh, there shouldn't be any cardio. I'm like, this is good. I'll just chill on the bike and focus on handstand push-ups. And then I had like 40 seconds or something like less than a minute to do the 25 gals and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm just Richard trying to get it done. I finished it, so I was stoked. That was a huge one. That was a highlight. The highlights are always the ones that you're not good at. Yeah. When you like kind of overcome something. It's never like when you do a great job at your strength, you know, like if I 
did a really heavy squat clean or something like that, you're like, oh, that's cool, but like kind of so I should. But when you sort of like overcome something or you see how far you've come, they're always the best ones. An athlete's ability to adapt while under pressure can be the determination of success. Find a way to persevere or crumble. The introduction of the new standard bred an unfortunate confusion for Lazar's judge that would cost him massively on the leaderboard. As much as anything, this was a test of Lazar's ability to overcome adversity. This was a good example of like, I wish it was just wall facing, you're gonna hear this like to the ground or to strict or even strict deficit because it put too much on the judges. I'm not the best on the handstand push-ups, but when I tried the wall facing handstand push-ups, I felt okay. On the paper, yes, I was good on the echo and I would be good on the handstand push-ups, but I had a problem with my judge. <laughs> We needed to go over the line. If I touch the line with my nose, I know I'm over it. Lazar just got screwed because he had tons of good reps, was getting no reps, and then people beside him would maybe not be hitting the standard, but they would not get them any no reps, so we let it go. Total, I, I did 22 reps of, of handstand push-ups and I, I got more no reps than good reps. Ultimately, Lazar would finish dead last and leave the day he had entered in fourth place in 16th overall. It was a devastating blow, as podium contention had been within his grasp. The ultimate test of fitness has made a habit of throwing athletes in open water. This year, however, the athletes are being tested in a pool. While Cara Saunders is anxious for an event that lines up with her skills, she's one of the most veteran athletes in the field knows better than most that at the CrossFit Games, you don't always get what you want, at least not when you want it. I had hoped uh, going into Saturday that I would have been sitting a little higher, but I was kind of like slowly making my way up with a few things, but hadn't really had an opportunity like an event to shine. I had to kind of work on my, my attitude a little bit at that point. I felt like on Saturday when I'm starting to feel like tired and sore and kind of going like, where's the barbells at, man? Like I need, I just need some barbells or something, you know? and just try and keep sticking to the plan and just take it one at a time. Just trying to get all my wees out before I get in the pool. <laughs> Maddie's like, last one? I'm like, there's never a last one. Yeah, it's good. You like smell? Yeah, I like swimming. I grew up swimming. Not like, I mean, I haven't done any like good swimming for a long time and I don't swim much year round, but it's nostalgic. For Paige Powers, a former competitive swimmer, this event is exactly what she wants. When your pitch shows up at the CrossFit Games, you swing hard, because you may not see it again. I was ready to get in the pool. I had been looking forward to that one, like, all night long. She's excited. She swam, you know, so, I mean, obviously that helps a ton. She's young, so having an event like this come up, you know, being young in the games, 
kind of more or less in your wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Really excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Like as a coach, and like I tell a lot of people, it's like not so much. Strategy is great. You help them out as much as you can, but really, it's just being there for them, keeping their mind just preoccupied. You know, you're more or less just trying to keep the mood light, making sure they're not just completely shut down on things. So, oh, it's fun. I love it. First round underway, two minute window, down and back. Powers and Kanto have the swimming background so they cannot lose any speed after Max Everett's gear. Here comes Paige Powers. So Powers actually had a much better swim. Under 10 seconds to go. One cow separating Kanto, Powers, and Frailva. I was kind of hoping for like another top 10 finish at least in that one, and things didn't really shake out that way. But I was grateful that we did get to get into the pool. I felt like I kind of got to show that I'm, you know, a decent swimmer. I was happy with my effort on the ski because I'm not a very big athlete. The very last swim, <laughs> I remember going through my mind of like, um, I'm a little out of breath, and I can tell that I'm not a super experienced swimmer. I might be the person that they pull out of the pool. <laughs> like I might just black out here in a second. It's not that the best swimmers are going to win this event outright because this is a ski event at the end of the day. The athlete that has the most cows skied at the end would be the winner. I still did well um, and it was still really fun, but yet yeah, looking back I probably should have just gone a little bit harder and trusted my fitness a little bit more in that regard that I could still back it up with that ski. While Saunders has yet to get her hands on a barbell, she did make the most of the pool, logging her second top five finish of the competition. Aside from her obvious physical skills, her veteran attitude appears to be her secret weapon. Yeah, she's good. She's like just trying to chill out. Everyone's a bit tired and sore today, so it's like today's, today's the day where you can, if you still want to push, you can make up a lot of space. So I think. I think she's in a really good headspace. I think she can do some damage today and get out of that top heat, and then who knows what happens after that. She still has that mentality of like, I'm just here to have fun and let the rest follow. Yeah, yeah. She just wants to have a good time and take every event as it kind of comes and just see see what happens from there, really. Obviously, some of the events haven't really been in her strong suit, so um, you know, she's just trying to make the most of those ones and have a bit of fun with it and try to surprise herself like she did last night with the. Uh, the handstand push-ups, like someone her size busting them out like that's pretty cool. So she was really happy about that one and then hopefully she can do really well on this one and hopefully the strength work workout tonight's really like up her alley and she can have a good time. Can't really win it on any one specific movement, but you could lose it on either of the three. So these athletes will have to be perfect if they want to execute here well. Kara has a decade of experience to lean on, Lazar Dukic is exhibiting the mindset of a veteran despite this being his sophomore year. In stark contrast to the dramatics of the previous evening, Lazar has readjusted his mindset and he's focused on the elements within his control. He approaches Saturday with high spirits. Rinse and repeat offers him a fresh start. In the heat of the moment, in the like five minutes after workout, if I do bad, I'm very, very angry, I'm very, very mad. But as the time passes, I get more and more calm. I woke up, you're still doing good, you're at the games, you're working your whole year for this, and just like enjoy and try to give your best. Nice rhythm, baby! 
the noise. Rudy's standing up tall. I worked on my sprinting for the whole season. He will cross that. All things, good, bad, or otherwise, must come to an end. And for the Team Mayhem Justice, the end was rapidly approaching. With the pressure off, the team took the competition floor for one final time. I don't think we actually even had a really necessarily a bad finish after that. It's just that there was enough points to grab because I mean everybody's good. You know, everybody that was ahead of us stayed ahead of us and two events left I think we realized that we weren't gonna make it. It becomes okay and then it's like a lot of pressure's off. Like I remember walking onto the field for that last event and there was zero nerves, like zero motion. It was just another training session. Just like before, we knew we knew our fate, so we just tried to enjoy it as much as we could and soak everything in for our one and done Mayhem Justice ride. I didn't, I don't, I can't say if I felt good or if I felt bad, but it was the, I mean, it was the end of the weekend. Like we were done, we couldn't do anything more. Our main goal was just to make it to the games and like just experience that. I mean, I hate to put it as such a just simple goal, but I mean that was it. Here's Mayhem Justice. They are the youngest team in this field, and it's by a lot. They were the ones not expected to be here. So they are a rookie team, a lot of new athletes in here. I mean, they're training with the best, with Rich Froning and team members in Cookville. It's the younger group that is gaining the experience. We won't be going team next year. The name Mayhem Justice will die with us, and whether or not any of those guys go team, I don't know, but as of right now, the plan is for everybody to go individual, go into the next season. There are two sounds that fans associate with Saturdays under the lights of the CrossFit Games, clang and bang. It should be no surprise by now, however, that Adrian Bosman had planned another unique twist on going heavy. While a barbell is standard fare, this year athletes would be met under the spotlight with massive, very heavy sandbags. I always know there's going to be something heavy. Typically it's on a Saturday night under the lights. I was surprised that it was a sandbag. Sandbags are cool, but I had a little bit of disappointment because I really wanted a barbell. A barbell you just can't hide from. You've either been working on the skill and the strength or you haven't and you can't fake it. We were like, this is gonna be dumb. Like we thought people would get hurt. I thought for sure some people were gonna throw out their backs and like not be able to compete the rest of the weekend. Thankfully no one did. It was really like interesting because a lot of the people were like failing the 160 in the warm-up area. We had 230 in the warm-up area. And I missed 230 probably like four or five times. The opening weight was 240. In the back, like people were failing the first bag and I was like, oh no. No barbell. No problem, we're still testing some strength tonight. Bed 10 couldn't be simpler than a barbell in sight, real world strength. Everybody is successful at 160 pounds, and now we'll move out the 170 pound bag. This is the last one to shoulder that bag. Spectator wise, it was way more fun than I thought it would be because like the crowd would get into it more and more and more as a bag that heavy and it's like they're fighting to get it up there. The atmosphere was on fire. When you do the snatch or you do the clean, like it's over like this, but when you do the sandbag, like you're struggling, you're lifting, you're lifting, you're lifting. People just did way better than you thought they would and it lasted longer. Like just would wheel the bag up, like wheel it up, like they just force it up there. So just squeeze your knees together. It was super impressive to like watch people just like grind through it. Hey! 
Paige Powers, who's found herself in a wrestling match with that thing the past couple of rounds. I'm one of the stronger-ish athletes out on the field. So I was kind of disappointed that I didn't get to really showcase that. I still feel the sandbags in my neck and in my back. <laughs> I can still feel it now. That's something that I do well, so I thought that was going to be my opportunity to have like a big lift night, take a really good place. And again, it ended up kind of being like that shoulder overhead where I was like, I've lost another strength event. Saunders has it to her chest. I was so pumped that I, that I cleared the 160 and then I got the 170 and I was like, cool. And then I got the 180 and I was like, okay, we guess we'll try for 190. I just wanted to clear the first send. Like, I'm like, some guys are going to go out in the first send, like, just clear the first send. We all started lifting. And I do the first sandbag, nobody's out. <laughs> I do the second, nobody's out. Everyone has stayed perfect so far. We have yet to see a man fail. I was happy with how I did. I lifted 300 pounds. I have proven to myself that I got stronger. It was the best lifting event ever. Happy with this one, like, in the warm-up area, I was missing 230, and I did 300 on the floor, so it was awesome. Uh, kind of bittersweet because of tie-break. I was 7th uh, out of 8 athletes on tie-break, but happy with uh, how I did on the lift. So, yeah, by far most fun I've ever had in a lifting event, ever. Yesterday, after the 33rd place in an uh, in event, like, it was just awful. Uh, and I feel like it wasn't my fault, it wasn't my fitness that was bad, it was just like the situation was pretty shitty. Beep. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, today, 4th, 6th, and 28th probably. So uh, I, at the end of the last day, I was 13, I think maybe 8th or 9th today. So it's okay, tomorrow make a little bit push again and uh, see what happens. To this point, a name that had been unusually absent from the conversation was superstar Guy Malheiros who was navigating the unfamiliar territory of early heats, barely hanging on to the top 20. But while the focus hung on the top 10, the young man who was known for playing loud had been quietly putting in work, climbing his way back towards the top. Now Heros was in low spirits from missing the expectations that he had set out for himself. Then I was in top 20, I never have been in this spot or in the second heat or in the third heat. He was disappointed that day for sure because everything engaged for sure just being the top 10 through the weekend maybe fluctuate maybe just outside. This was a great learning experience you just have to remember it's a long weekend and like every point matters like you got to die for points. So you get 29th in a workout go the extra 98 to 100 percent so maybe you get two places better even there because those points will matter at the end. Fight as hard as you would going from third to first as you would 33rd to 30th. After being 20 I was like, let's just finish the weekend and let's see. And I was thinking that the worst events for me were already gone. At that point, it was just trying to encourage Guy and let them just keep fighting there because those events did come. And we got to remember that year to year, hey, your events are going to come. The ones you don't do as well, like, let's just do mitigate the damage and keep moving on. I wasn't feeling any pressure anymore because I wasn't in a, in a position to have pressure or whatever. 
So I was like, okay, like this is a good workout for me. I'm gonna win, so it's a home run. So I was like, let's win. Round one for Heat One is underway. He just gotta get underneath. My heroes continues to lead here. Here comes Bukowski. Dallin Peppers there as well. There goes Key. Well, he will take round one of Heat One. About time he's showing up. 114.97 for Magieros. That's what I've been looking for for the last three days. I'm glad he's back. A dumbbell, and he's going to go two for two. And Key may have gotten faster that round. Magieros just ahead of Fikowski here on these 21 months. He is dead. Fikowski with one rep to go. Magieros to the dumbbell. Final two reps for Key. He's gonna sweep the three rounds. That's good. People say that I'm a good sprint. Let's make them right. When the lights go down and the weights go up, fans have a Pavlovian instinct to chant the name Guy. With the wind of an event win at his back and facing one that could have been named after him, bright lights, big weights, and a fanatical crowd. It was Guy's time to shine. I was expecting something nice for the public and for the athletes as a barbell or, I don't know, maybe a clean ladder, snatch ladder. I was just like, let's see how it goes. Like, no one has done it, and I never done it. Sometimes his low back, like, gets tweaked. Now this is one, if it's gonna get tweaked, this is the one to get tweaked, but he's just so strong and stable. And Guy really is like, he's athletic. He can figure things out. And like that pays off in an event like this too. He's got the power. He's just gotta get it stabilized on that shoulder. Oh, there it is. No one was falling. So we were in 330 to 20 and everyone is still there. Like 15 guys is still there. like no one's breaking, no one's letting go. And I was watching all the guys doing it. I was like, no, if they are doing, I gotta do it. And this is the exact position Guy wants to be in. By himself on the platform. And you hear the Guy chants in the crowd. And then they came out with the PCT sandbag. I was like, holy damn. I think they're bringing another bag out. They're wheeling another one out of <laughs> Done. Here's Guy Mayeros at 350. So I went there and tried to pick it up, and it just didn't go well. the tie break, I was like, I never lose a sprint, so let's go. So we got a tie break for the win. Hopper had a big false start. Jason Hopper got away with one right there. It's not gonna matter, because I think Eva Hills may have beat Nick Matthew over the finish line. Look at this! Breaks on. What? It's a tie! Guy, you went first and first in your last two events. You look like a completely different athlete than the first three days of competition. What has changed for you? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the workouts are good for me, and I'm just making sure that if it's a home run, I'm going to hit. Well, you both hit a home run. Congratulations, Nick Guy. 100 points here in event number 10. Congratulations. Let's go, baby! How was that? Bro, it was crazy. Like, it was crazy. And, you know, how uh, to pick up the bag. We just figured out in the, in the warm-up. And I also figured out how to pick it up on the, on the competition floor. Uh, and it was crazy. I asked God for, for the victory. Uh, for the event win, and 
just happened and I'm very happy, uh, very grateful and doing all of this for his glory and that's it. Despite their best efforts, Mayhem Independence was failing to gain ground on the competition. They were executing, but it wasn't enough to make a substantial climb. Saturday, we were hungry. I mean, it's moving day, right? We were hungry to move up on the leaderboard. Someone's got to move up, someone's got to move down. That was kind of where we found our spot in that fifth place. We didn't want to, but we just kept getting beat by the wrong teams. Like, we're doing well in the events, but the same teams keep beating us, so we're not making up any ground. The swim, I wish it had more emphasis on the swim portion. It was a lot on the skier. And then later in the day, it just kind of seemed like more of the same. Just, we couldn't make up ground. They have independence. The second team from Cookville, they came in in fifth place, 30 points off of the podium. This will not help their case. Still a minute before the cap as they come to the red line. Mayhem Independence finishes inside of 11 minutes. By Sunday, it was clear that Independence would fail to secure the podium spot they wanted. Rather than questioning their abilities, the men of independence viewed the journey as an invaluable learning experience, one to grow and build on. Going to the last event, I was still confident and hopeful that we could really edge a few teams out. It was really Reykjavik, right? We wanted to be fourth. We wanted them to be fifth, right? To make sure that we're ahead of them. I remember I finished the bar muscle ups and I'm watching it all play out. My team comes up and I see Rich over there and his team, they're hugging each other. I went and like gave them all a hug and congratulated them. I'm sitting with my team and I was like trying to take it all in. It all happened so fast, right? Your, your brain's just trying to take it all in. And I remember at first I was so salty and sour. It didn't last too long because I had to go back in the files of my mind and be like, well, look at all that you accomplished. Like I know I, I, I wanted it so bad to stand next to Rich on the podium but just to have the opportunity to train alongside him. Like thinking about all the moments and the experiences I had training with him all year, going head to head with Freedom, like throwing down with Andrea, Taylor, and Sam all year, grinding with them all year long. Like it was such a beautiful experience to be a part of his 10th gold medal. It was pretty cool to be a part of what we want to call maybe the end of a legacy of him being out there on the floor with the team of the, you know, the rich, the, the froning and freedom legacy, you know, him being the captain of freedom. It's cool to be a part of that, you know, see it firsthand on the floor. Yeah, it's super special because I've watched him on TV, I've watched him at the games, I've watched him at regionals, I've watched him at all these different competitions win or do well, but it's kind of cool to see him almost put an end to it and you get to be there part, be a part of it. In 2023, Angelo DeChico looks to build on the legacy of Froning and keep the Mayhem Freedom name alive. I am currently looking for teammates, hopefully for the new Freedom team. Everyone plays team sports and they're growing up. That team camaraderie, being out there and pushing for some, something else other than yourself, you know, going, like, going out there and wanting to do well, picking up other people when they do bad and having people pick you up when you do bad, and uh, really just not being on an island out on the floor, like, you know, you got your team to surround you, you're not just alone. The quote that I like to look back on is Teddy Roosevelt, I'll go in there and I'll fail a thousand times if that's what it takes, I don't care, you know, I'll just keep going and failing. You know, that's, that's how winners win. You know, they go, they go in there and they fail over and over again until they finally win. You just gotta be persistent. Luke Parker is taking decisive action towards achieving his goal of individual glory at the CrossFit Games. He's fully committed with no plan B. It definitely makes me feel like I got an edge on some people that haven't qualified for the games going into the next season as an individual. And that's my goal is, is to qualify for the CrossFit Games as an individual. Right now that's my only focus. I like the phrase, burn the ships. And that burn the ships phrase has been meaningful to me and it's pretty much saying like you're all in, but that it's life or death, you know. And I've just been mentally just telling myself, I've burnt the ships, I've moved to Cookville, 
to be a CrossFit athlete. I'm all in going into this next season as an individual. I've had two beautiful years to be here and learn from Rich, train with Rich, and I'm all in. I've burned the ships. There's no looking back, there's no turning back. There's only forward and succeeding. And that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go punch my ticket as an individual, and I'm gonna represent Mayhem well. Bailey Rail's 2022 CrossFit Games hadn't played out as she expected. Further disappointment came on Sunday morning when rain forced event organizers to eliminate L-sit rope climbs from Alpaca, a movement that played squarely into Bailey's wheelhouse, but now stole her advantage. The rain has pretty much ceased. It's just lightly spitting right now, but it was pouring rain earlier. And as mentioned, that made the ropes much too slick. The demo team with Adrian Bosman has been out here all morning long. They decided to remove that element in terms of safety. I know they were working as much as they could with the environment they had, but like just to totally nix legless rope climbs. But some other people like that got probably 25th in that workout might have got like 10th if they had been else at legless rope climbs. That's really tough movement. The bulk of the workout was the sled and kettlebells, but like that still matters a lot. I was obviously disappointed about that, but I knew that I couldn't enter the workout feeling defeated. I don't want to be down going into the workout. I knew, again, talking to Tyler, it's like my best effort is going to be enough, so that's what I'm going to try to do. That workout was one where I got to my kettlebells and it was so slick, and I'm not very efficient with that movement anyway, so it was just very difficult for me. And I remember having the battle in my head of like, Honestly, I, I don't know why I was brought here right now. Bailey Rail is still working through this. It's an 18 minute time cap. It makes me emotional because I just wanted to leave because I felt like everything that I had done was like for nothing. I felt like I sacrificed a lot and I wasn't like I wasn't able to be around my like my family and I, I was just these things were running through my head as I'm doing these kettlebell cleans of like God, why did you bring me here? Did you bring me here to like embarrass me? I look down the row and it's like, just me. Why, like, why am I here? And I remember in that moment, he told me like, I didn't promise that there's not going to be storms. Like I promise that there's going to be storms. And my main promise is that I'm gonna be there through you with him. Like I'm gonna hold your hand through all the difficult times and the adversity because I'm your foundation. And here comes Tia Toon at your own Bailey Rail. And it kind of was just a reminder of like, you know what? It doesn't matter if you're first or last. Like, I'm gonna be here with you through it anyways. And maybe I didn't call you here to, to showcase how hard you've been working. Maybe I've called you here to show other people that you can do hard things and that I'm going to be with you through those storms. <laughs> No one's journey is perfect. How we react is what determines our character. Bailey Rail is a living example of our mantra, into the storm. It's a dedication to turn and face the tribulations in life, not run away from them. but I also was so, so sad. 
because I was so focused on the outcome. And she wanted to do better, and I get that. I wanted to do better, and I thought Bailey was fitter than she was last year going in, so it's just hard to keep remembering that even if you don't perform as well through the weekends. I felt like I wasn't able to showcase how, again, how hard we've been working, and I know that everybody works really hard. I was just disappointed and questioning, like, I didn't know what my purpose was yet. Initially, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need to, to have some quiet time with the Lord because I don't know really what I was doing here. Like, I know that I gave my best effort, but I was just very disappointed in where that stacked up. She's really good about just trusting God and <clears throat> like she should, and that's the best thing we can do and put faith in that and that we do all we can and there's just things that happen that we can't control and outside of our uh, circumstances and life's bigger than just the CrossFit Games that weekend. I try to remind athletes that too, like, this is matters and we should do the absolute best we can and we want to perform, we want to win. That's why we're going out there, but in 40 years, no one's going to remember who won the CrossFit Games this year. So there's bigger things in life. It's about who we are in the midst of that and faith here, we're going to try to honor God and all, and she does that. I'm so proud of how I came through every storm, and I knew that I had a, a lot of storms thrown at me, and I was very, very happy with how I stepped into the arena, even being terrified sometimes. It was just like such a special year and such a special environment to be in that, again, I had to focus on the positives versus the one negative of I didn't feel like I was able to showcase the year that I've had. So I was just sad, but also just overwhelmed with gratitude. This soft season, we're gonna attack our weaknesses too. B's gonna try and keep getting stronger. Uh, she's doing great, and then good things are coming for B one way or another. So she's gonna remember that. In her first year at the CrossFit Games, Paige Powers finished 25th overall. She entered the contest as a rookie with few expectations. She left as a veteran with the belief that she belongs. Paige did great this year, especially the semifinals. The Games 2 is such a confidence builder, like, hey, I can do this, I belong here, I'm a Games athlete. You know, I didn't place as great as I wanted to this year but it definitely is like firing me up for this next year. Not that a 25th place finish is a failure by any means, but not reaching your goals sometimes just lights that extra fire that you need. I think she won the games with a great mindset of like, just do as best she could. She did the best she could. She got past that cut line, which is great too. Let's her finish the weekend. So it's really something to build upon for, she got a long career ahead of her if she wants. She's super young, like we're saying, and. At this point, it's just, hey, let's pinpoint those weaknesses and keep chipping away at those, get a little bit better each year, and then it'll reflect on the leaderboard. Make some noise for Paige Powers! Powers has already successfully carried her momentum into the offseason. As her confidence grows to meet her work capacity, she's no longer content with a role as a supporting cast member. And at 20 years old, Paige has one critical asset on her side that many of her competitors do not, time. With Guy's electric performance in the sandbag ladder, he had finally slayed his demons. But was it too late? While the podium was out of sight, a top 10 finish was still within his reach. For Guy Malheros, it was do or die. My goal was to get to the top 10. So watching the points and at the moment were kind of like possible to do it. It would depend on the events on Sunday. In that moment, I thought it could be possible to get in the top 10. So I was like, let's see. We are underway. We start with a sled push loaded with six 70-pound kettlebells. They had to push it two sections, and then they will unload two.
seventh place overall, but he has finished first in two of the last three events. And Gee being one of the most powerful and strongest athletes in the field, he has another opportunity to do the same. The turn at the same time, the back of the 350 pound barbell, no problem for Bayeros. That looked like a warm up. Now he's back to the yoke. The weekend for Lazar Jukic had been a roller coaster ride from the very first event. On Sunday morning, it was clear that he would be riding that coaster for one final lap. His ultimate goal was improving on his 2021 games placement. But heavy implements have been his downfall in the past, and now a 665 pound yoke have stood in his way. With his 22nd place finish in the event, Lazar's overall placement in the top 10 was in jeopardy. The final event would decide his fate. In the run-up to her final day, Cara Saunders is thoughtful as always. She found herself in a position to finish in the top 10, a full decade into her competitive career. I definitely thought I had an opportunity. I was like, this last day looks a little more like me and a little bit more like what I know. I just had to, again, mentally, it all came back to mentally, just like, oh, okay, I've got to show up, got to do these workouts. And I was just grateful that they weren't like massively out of my comfort zone. At that point, I was also thinking, oh my God, it's been a while since I've like felt like it was a possibility to not be in the top 10. But I had an opportunity and, you know, Maddie was like, this is it now. Like you've only got two left. You just need to keep it together and go hard for it to like really make a difference. To back ninth place finishes, Cara put her fate in her own hands. And as the stars aligned, Saunders was finally thrown the pitch that she was after. I think for me, the biggest highlight was finishing on something that felt really like the CrossFit I know. You had a monostructural piece at the start. We row, and then it was cool. You had to get out of your comfort zone and row a little bit faster, which was like, you know, you're like oh, rude, but cool. Like, that's so cool. It was hard. It was really hard work coming off that row. It was one of the hardest 1K rows I've felt. Like, I was just, I didn't feel very powerful at that point. But I was like, there's no reason why I can't get this row in this time. It's just going to be uncomfortable. And then to do a thruster, to have a barbell working through and then finish on a gymnastics piece, like, that's my jam. Going down the floor, I was just like, this is it. This is the last one. And I was doing the bar muscle ups and I was like, super gassed out. I'm like, this is hard work, but I love bar muscle ups. I've done so many of them. I was like three or four in and I was hurting. And I looked up and my daughter walked down the stairs, like right opposite me. And she's like looking at me, like, and I'm at the top of a bar muscle up. And I'm just like, I can't get down now. Like I'm, I'm up here now. And I'm like, and then I could, I focused on her. And then I saw everyone around her going like, come on, come on. Like just willing me, to, like they couldn't believe it. Like she's gonna stay on. And I was like, yeah, there's no way. I'm going to fall off this bar before I get off this bar. <laughs> 
Kara Saunders' second place finish was enough to secure seventh in the overall standings. It would be her sixth top 10 placement at the CrossFit Games all time. And this time, her daughter was there to see it. I'm the mom that has my kid involved in everything that I do and I would never change that. Like I don't want to live the life where it's like we do kids stuff over there and then we do my stuff over here and they're separate. Like we live a very integrated life where everyone in our family does everything together. And that's what I kind of always want to live and always want to teach her that, you know, we are like we're a little team in the family forever. So I will always have her be a part of it and show her what we're doing and have her be included for as long as I can and so long as people will tolerate it. Kara's finish was legendary, a fitting finish for a woman who has made a massive impact on the sport of fitness and the community of CrossFit. In the 10 years I haven't fulfilled like a number one podium spot, I think it wasn't also ever my number one goal. I don't think that was like, that was never my number one priority. So I definitely don't feel like I've ever felt short because I got so much out of it too. And I think in all that time and all that commitment and dedication that I've put into competing at a high level, to still be like double some of those girls' ages almost, you know, these young girls have been doing it for a long time, and still be able to hold my own while I balance life is pretty cool. Yeah, I feel definitely really content with with my placing and the overall results. I didn't even know if I'd compete longer than one year, you know, like I, I thought I'd just fluked it, you know, it was just an accident, I got lucky and and then I just kind of kept qualifying and kept getting a little bit better and one year rolled into the next and yeah, here we are a decade later and I spent pretty much my entire 20s learning something totally new and growing and yeah, turning into a grown up through CrossFit in the last 10 years. Although Saunders has chosen to depart competition to focus on family and business, her mark on the sport over the course of a decade as a pioneer and a people's champ will never be forgotten. Cara's goal and legacy had been secured, but Guy and Lazar had work to do in pursuit of their own. For both athletes, it would come down to the final rep of the final event. There's a wrinkle to this pro version of Jackie. Yes, these athletes are at the row, 1,000 meters. However, they have to complete that row within three minutes and 15 seconds on the dot. That was one of the coolest things all weekend was making them force that row in. Athletes was like, hey, here's your top end pace. Ladies is like a 144, dudes is 137. Don't get above that. That's your ceiling for that whole row. I saw the workout, I, I didn't think I'm going to win it. There are like better guys in rowing, there are better guys in thrusters, there are better guys in bar muscle than me. I just tried my 1K PR once and I did 302. So I didn't know how I would row 1K in 315. Jake told me, hey, you can't touch 138. I was like, okay. The workout started and I, I kept the pace 136, 135, 136, 135. 300 meters left. I touched two times 138 and 137. And I was like, I can't touch it, I can't touch it. I finished the row, stand up, look around, nobody's moving from the row. And I feel good. So I'm like, let's take advantage of, of this and like start smashing those thrusters.
The row was. How would you finish that? Like three, thirteen, or something? twelve. Okay. Most stressful. Like is there? Other? Like at three hundred, like missing three hundred to finish. I touched two times to one thirty eight. I was like, no, I can't do that. I can't touch. I can't touch. I went like one thirty six. You're the last off the two and off the thrusters, so you. Yeah, I knew that I would like catch up on the, the more muscle. I wish I could do better. I thought that I could do better. Maybe like I was going for 20, but I did I 13 it. or 12. Did a lot, yeah. 12, 4, 4. Despite the fact that he showed tremendous grit and perseverance, ultimately returning to the top 10, he was not content with his performance. I didn't perform my expectations at all. Like, I expected much more. But for some reason, I didn't, I didn't perform well, and it was very frustrating. It was shameful for me, I think, to get a top 10. It didn't go as I planned, and it was a very bad experience of the games. One thing that I, that I promised myself is that I don't want to ever feel that again, you know? So we have a lot of things to do this, the next season. With Guy's determination and work ethic, in conjunction with his relocation to Cookville, leave little doubt that the athlete who shows up to Madison next year will, in many ways, be unrecognizable. After all, Rich Froning is an expert at isolating and eliminating weakness. Despite the peaks and valleys of Lazar's competition, he improved his overall placement from last year. A massive accomplishment in a sport where just qualifying year over year isn't a guarantee, and Lazar shows no signs of slowing down on that improvement. Judging from early indications in the offseason, his trajectory is aimed directly at the podium of next year's games. I was very, very happy that I beat my score from last year. Last year everything went smoothly, I think it was like Beginner's luck. I didn't get any no reps. I didn't get shut down in any workout. I didn't miss, uh, counted any reps. I finished ninth. And this year, a lot of stuff went wrong, and I still beat my placing from last year. With knowing what I went through and with how it panned out, still improving on on last year, I was very happy. It was a good way to end my season. Lazar killed it, especially with the, right, the two events that he really had unfortunate things happen in them with the bike and then the handstand push-up one. Lazar is going to continue to be better and better, especially as he gets stronger. Lazar's fittest man in Europe, proved it twice this year at semifinals and games. Props to him, he's going to keep, you're right, be a driving force in this sport and like people are going to recognize more and more Lazar. He's always going to be a top tier athlete and I think next year he'll improve his places more and more, hopefully get on that podium. For his fans, 2022 and Rich Froning's retirement from team competition marks the end of an era, a turning point in history. You wouldn't be wrong to reflect, to consider how the future might take shape. You would be wrong, however, not to celebrate. The new era of mayhem is exploding with opportunity and progress. And in this new beginning, the stage is set for the development of the next generation. Our heroes come from across the globe. Brazil, Russia, Argentina, Serbia, Australia, Canada, and of course, the US. And the future of mayhem also lies with you, our community, both local and online. We have committed to testing yourself alongside us daily and improving yourself through the discipline of exercise. You are the Mayhem family. You are Mayhem's future. While we welcome change as inevitable, rest assured that our essence will remain the same. Our success is and always will be forged daily by hard work and discipline. We have and always will root our stability in a foundation of faith family, and service. Oh, let's record.
record this. Uh, but we can't put this online. We uh, can't? Yeah, because it's just like we to have a document. Oh, yeah, I got because you. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna propose her at the games. Gotcha. Yeah. So after the final event, I'm gonna go on the bleachers and she'll be crying and whatever, and then I'm gonna like.